So like in a circle, do you have infinite points of inflection? In a circle? Yeah. Ooh. Well... Because it continuously... So, so we've got a bit of a problem in that, like, this is a, this is a relation, right? Oh, this is a relation. Yeah. So I can think about the two halves. If you've got the top semicircle, right, well, for the entirety of its domain, it looks concave down to me. And by the way, we can, we can prove this pretty, like, it's not that hard. Think about this. Um, let's take, like, what's the equation of a circle? Give me an easy one. Okay, so I've trained you well. Here's the unit circle, right? That's the whole thing. That's the top and the bottom. Um, to consider derivatives, I just want to do one part at a time because a relation, you've got two derivatives everywhere. That's not very helpful, okay? So how will I turn that into a semicircle? What will I do to it? I want to take a square root. Now, what I want to do is... It will help if I have, because most functions have y as a subject, there's a good reason for that. You put something in, you get something out, okay? So this is still both sides, right? If I take the square root, that gives me plus or minus. And now you can see there's the top half, the plus half, and there's the minus, which is the bottom half. Let's just think about the top one for a second. The top semicircle. That's the one that I've um, just drawn over here. Without a set of axes, but you, you get the idea. Um, that's the square root of 1 minus x squared. How do I write that in such a way that I could actually differentiate it? Um, well, I'm going to do it in index form, right? So I've got this, 1 minus x squared to the power of a half. I can differentiate this. I have chain rule. I know how to do this. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? 2x. OK, we'll do the inside and then we'll do the outside. Is that OK? So the inside is 1 minus x squared. Its derivative is minus 2x. OK? And then I do the outside. The outside, it's something to the power of a half. So I'm going to multiply by the power and then I'm going to reduce the power by one. Are you comfortable with that? Is that okay? All right, now I can, I can tidy up a little bit, right? Uh, let's see here. Minus x. I'm going to leave this in index form. The reason I'm going to leave it in index form is because I need to differentiate it again. Is that okay? Right? So. I don't need that much space. This was, uh, that was a bit naughty, dy on dx. Okay, let's do the second derivative. Now, this is not quite as nice because I'm going to need to do a quotient, uh, sorry, product and chain rule, but that's okay. That's okay, we can do it. Uh, let's think about this. Uh, we'll call this u, and we'll call that b. Okay, one step at a time. It's a product, right? So this is v u dash plus u b dash. Are you okay with that? Been a little while since we've done these questions. Okay, we can still do it. V is just this whole thing. Okay, one minus x squared to the power of negative a half. What's u dash minus one? Minus one. Okay, I've got u there. It's just minus x. Okay. <sighs> this is this is the fun part, right? Now, at least at least I've actually done something just like this a second ago. Right, so this is not as bad as it looks. V dash, all right, I'm going to do the inside, minus which is minus 2x, because oh. it's 1 minus x squared. And then I'm going to do the outside, which is, minus running out of space here, I'm going to multiply by the power, negative. which is negative a half. Minus and then I'm going to reduce the power by 1, which is 1 minus x squared to the power of minus 3, minus three on 2. Now, I know it looks gross. That's okay, it was just the first step. But remember, all I'm interested in is, what can this tell me about concavity? And all I need to know is sign. That's all I need, okay? So let's tidy up this disaster, okay? What am I getting out the front? It's just, it's just this guy, right? You see, that was my V U dash, is that okay? So that looks like minus one over the square root of one minus X squared. Is that okay? What's hanging on the end? How many negatives do I have? Minus 2x squared on 2, so negative x squared. Yeah, good. I've got 1, 2, 3 negatives, so I'm going to get a negative. Okay. Um, I've got a 2 and I've got a half, so that cancels. And then I've got an x and an x, so that gives me an x squared. What happens to this? That's 1 minus x squared. Hmm. One minus x squared to the power of three. To so the power of minus one. It's on the denominator and it's minus three on two. To the power of three. 
But oh, didn't okay. we? I was just gonna yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I see what you're Now, I actually could write it like that. I could write it as this, which may actually help me. Do you see that's the power of three on two? Is that okay? There's the one and there's the half. Okay. And that's actually not a bad idea because I, um, I have these two fractions here, right? And I actually want them to come together because I want to write the sign of the whole thing. Okay? <laughs> See? You're going to ask me this question now. Okay, that's all right. Um, to get the fractions together, I need the same denominator, don't I? Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the denominator here. So knowing the denominator is the same, all I do is 1 minus x squared, 1 minus x squared. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Boy, I should not have started by working that low. Okay? So now. I've got these two fractions, okay? I can put these together. I can totally put these together. Don't get intimidated, okay? That minus one times that is gonna give me x squared minus one. That's the first fraction. Yep, yep. Take away the second fraction. Over some gross thing. Uh, uh, this guy. You okay with that? What's on the numerator? Minus, Minus one. one. Mm -hmm. So it's always. The okay, yeah. be careful, be careful, oh, be careful. No. Oh, yeah. On the denominator, you have to be a bit careful with this thing. This is the power of 3 on 2. We're not used to dealing with that, but that's okay. Remember, this is a semicircle, right? I rubbed it off, but where is this semicircle again? Where does it exist? Between, Between one one. One. Negative, one. negative 1 and 1. Right? Now, in this restricted domain, okay. Tell me, what's the smallest this could possibly get? Zero. Uh, Wait, no. Wait, the concavity could be it zero. Can, it can go close yeah. to minus How one. So like a very big can, can x equal, for instance, let's do the oh, simple example. X, can oh, x oh, equal oh, one? No. no. Yes. No. No. Oh, well, no. No, 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 no. no, it can't, because no. it's one on zero. Ah, OK, so let's think about this. There's oh. a few things happening here, right? <laughs> we really regret this now. All right, the um, the graph itself, the graph itself is continuous. It better be. It's a circle. It exists there. Okay, but even before I get to this, which is the second derivative, right? Boy, by the way, did it simplify. Did you expect it to simplify that much? Very simple. Um, even when you got to the first derivative, here's the first derivative. The first derivative doesn't exist at that point we just mentioned. Why not? Because x cannot equal. Because it's not included. Okay, firstly, because. If I, if I put in x equals 1 there, I'm on the denominator already. But more importantly, geometrically, because it's a Tang freaking circle, the tangent, the tangent here is vertical. So, so you have no gradient. It can't have a gradient. So that's why it doesn't exist. So if the first derivative doesn't exist, then you can forget about the second derivative, right? It doesn't matter. But it can equal 0. But, it would, okay, now even before I get to 0, right, I kind of know what's happening in 0. Just think about it, just a little bit to the left of 1. Okay, because I have a gradient there, I have a second derivative there. Okay, so like put in some tiny number, like 0.999999. Okay, when you square that, what's going to happen to it? It's going to be a really It'll be a, well, if it's just 0.9999, it's actually very close to 1. So when you square it, it will still be close to 1, but a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. Is that okay? Is that alright? Yeah. You got 1 minus that. Is it positive or negative? It's positive. It's a very small positive number. So therefore, when you do this, it's still positive. In other words, all of that to argue, my denominator is positive. Okay? I can make the same argument when I go this way because it's an even function. Okay? It's an even function. So therefore, you can rehearse this whole thing. When you put a negative in, the same thing will happen. It will still be, the denominator will still be positive. It can never be negative. But my numerator is negative. I always have a negative on the top. I always have a positive on the bottom. That means the whole thing is always... Negative, negative, which means the whole thing is concave down. But so what I don't understand is like what? you what? define you define the circle as like the top part being the top semicircle. So I'm looking at that semicircle. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing, right? If I repeated this process and I looked at the bottom half, right? What would change? What, what's it different? Would go up. Everything would be exactly reversed. So this guy here. I would take the negative case, right? So then my derivative would be negative, which would mean my second derivative would also be negative of that, right? So it would just be one on one minus. So then you'll have positive on positive. But like, which is how, always do you, how do you know to consider the top half and the bottom half? Not just like any, any semicircle on the circle. Because I can't, I know geometrically, I can't get anything meaningful unless I consider one or the other. Otherwise, I'm just going to get both. Yay, I'm concave up and down everywhere. Well, that's nice, but it's not meaningful. Okay. 
Do you have to state that the domain is restricted? Yeah, the domain is actually an important part of this because had I put in x is greater than 1, right, what happens? Well, this is going to become 1 minus some bigger number. This thing will be negative. I'm in trouble, right? The concavity will be, well, the concavity will change, right? And so, yeah, you, the restricted domain is actually a crucial part of the argument, which is why I had to talk about it. Okay.